So today we're taking a very special look at Solasta Crown of the Magister. It's a brand new turn-based tactical RPG game. And I noticed it has quite the positive reception out on Steam. So I was like, what in the world is up with this game? So that's what we're gonna be talking about today as well as the brand new Sorcerer update. So a lot of stuff to go over in this video. Let's do this. Hey everyone, what's happening? It's Open World Games here. Hope you're doing good. And we are talking about Solasta here. So what makes Solasta so unique in the RPG realms of games is that it's based on the Dungeons and Dragons SRD 5.1 rule set. So this is extremely faithful to the tabletop rule set that we know and love, but in an epic video game form. Now there's more casual options, of course. So if you're not familiar with any of this, don't sweat it. There's no need to panic because this game offers a ton of options to fine tune your difficulty and experience, which I found really, really cool. And before I forget, by the way, a very special thanks goes out to Tactical Adventures for reaching out to me, believing in what I do, and sponsoring this video. So one thing that I really appreciate about this game is it's very robust character creator. You can choose your ancestry, character class, family background, and also roll for your stats. So there's a lot of options here, but as you advance your characters, you'll be unlocking new abilities as you go, which can alter gameplay in many different ways. So let's get into the character creator right now and talk more about the sorcerer as well. So first up, there's ancestry. Choose wisely because there's advantages and disadvantages with each ancestry. Humans are more well-rounded but lack specific skills, but the elf can use dark vision to see in dim or dark areas. And this game has key gameplay features, by the way, around darkness and light. More on that in just a moment. But as you get deeper into character creation, you'll run into the classes. There's cleric, fighter, paladin, ranger, rogue, wizard, and the recently added sorcerer. Now, each one of them have unique weapons, abilities, and subclasses, and strengths and weaknesses regarding stats like strength, dexterity, and more. Now, in the case of Sorcerer, they can be more proficient in casting spells, attacking with daggers and staffs, but they also have three subclasses. The Draconic Bloodline adds bonus defenses and elemental resistances. Uh, the Mana Painter can drain sorcery points, and the Child of the Rift can trade their health for bonus sorcery points. Now the sorcerer can also manipulate their own spells with the meta magic feature. So just within the source sorcery class, excuse me, there's quite a bit of play styles to explore. So it's pretty extensive. Now the sorcerer also has an incredible amount of spells as well as you can clearly see. Now sorcerers can specialize in practically every magical element including fire, acid, ice, and more. But I really like uh, that there's more unique abilities like Annoying Bee, which distracts enemies. By far, one of my favorites, though, is Magic Missiles, which target multiple opponents on the battlefield and can deal quite a bit of damage. Now, you also have classes like the Cleric, who specialize in Wisdom and Charisma, but is most notably an expert at the elements. Now, the Cleric has a whopping nine subclasses as well, so you can really specialize in becoming a Master of Lightning, and thunder if that's your thing. But if you want to get up close and personal as a fighter, you can do that as well with other classes. For example, you can further upgrade the Paladin as you level up the new fighting styles dedicated to defense, dueling, great weapon uh, fighting, and protection as you can see here. Now leveling up is also unique in that it is handled during a long rest, which you can initiate by renting a room at an inn. Now this is where you can prepare your spells, recover, and most notably, level up your character classes, including all four of your characters. So you're gonna wanna take these long rests when it comes time. But first, you'll want to create your four characters for your journey, or you can choose from the pre-made list, but I love seeing your created characters in the cinematics. This is something that I absolutely love. They will offer their own unique opinions about current matters, but these opinions will be based on their family history and who they are, which of course is something you can help craft in the character creator to begin with. Will your sorcerer lead the authority and violence as an aristocrat, or how about a spy who embraces being cautious and selfish with a dash of greed in there. All these decisions will influence dialogue and how your characters react to situation, situations and it makes the game 
very, very entertaining, let me tell you what. Now, I also appreciate that each character's backstory was explained in the flashbacks during the beginning segment of the game. One character escaped prison, the other acted like a thief in the night, and another survived a dangerous wolf ambush on a land bridge. And this all acted like tutorials, but I really appreciated how they actually dove into the character's backgrounds. It really helped build their backstories, and so far I'm really enjoying their interactions in the story. Now, one thing that I, I got kind of surprised about uh, was the use of stealth in this game, light and shadow, plus the use of verticality in combat. Now, light will give you away when using torches, but it will also allow you to better see your foe so you can actually hit them in combat. So that's really important. Now, stealth is also very important for bypassing certain groups of enemies that you just cannot face off against or initiating a surprise attack to begin combat. And if your party is able to get on a high vantage point, then they can really, really take the advantage. You're gonna want an archer on some of these high vantage points for sure. And that's where this game is absolutely the most fun. The combat is turn-based and can be as challenging as you want it to be, dependent on several of the game settings. You'll essentially be given turns per character with a certain amount of moves and abilities to perform within those turns. You can also initiate counterattacks and reactive moves if you think your character will be attacked. That's the simplified version of it, by the way, considering there's a wide variety of subclasses per class that change the gameplay significantly. Now, it offers a ton of strategy, and the more intense fights are especially memorable and rewarding if you are able to walk away with all party members on two feet. It's one of the reasons why the character creation tools are so important at the beginning of the game. So it would be wise to really have a party of four that complement one another in battle. That is so important. There's also some really cool interactive things you could do in battle, by the way, like decide to disengage, to fall back and send an obstacle at your enemy. These moments can happen, but you really do have to time them right and look for them. Once again, playing into the tactical bit of the turn-based RPG mechanics. Now, uh, I've overall really enjoyed the variety of the gameplay gameplay, by the way. Uh, one moment your character is escaping from prison, using levers to find hidden pathways and stealth to sneak by enemies. And in other missions, it's absolute pure chaos as entire battles erupt around new monsters, enemies that you've never seen before. So I'm really impressed with the variety and definitely spices up the moments between story revelations for sure. And one other cool feature of this game is the Dungeon Maker. Now, you can also test out your party with this Dungeon Maker, which is an impressive tool that allows you to handcraft your own dungeons with traps, enemies, loot, and more. You can even share your creations with other players. I had the chance to really test out the Dungeon Maker, and there's some really cool stuff you can actually do with this. You can make large hallways, for example, that are empty and dark, allowing for tension to build before a battle. So essentially, you are really pacing the dungeon the way you want to. You want to have a ton of traps, you can go for it. How about an overwhelming amount of enemies around the corner? You can do that too. So there's a lot you can do here uh, in this dungeon maker for sure. And there's a lot you can do in Solasta. So if you are interested in this one, check out the link in the description below to find out more about the game on Steam. Stay tuned because this game is going to be updated with further DLC and updates in the future. They're really proud of this one as they should be. Uh, so be sure to check out more about Solasta. You know, the takeaway from this one is that I was really, really impressed overall with also the character creator and how you can really fine tune your experience the way you want to. So if you really do want to get in here with Zlasta and play it with uh, you know only magical classes, all four characters doing that, you can actually do that. You can even go into the Dungeon Maker and test out that type of party system. Or perhaps if you really want to risk it and try something different where it's all fighters or you know CQC type characters, you can do that as well. It's really cool the things you could do in the Dungeon Creator. And I really do uh, encourage you, if you do check out this game, to check out the Dungeon Maker because you can experiment with the, your characters a lot more but yeah hop into the story mode there's a lot to be had there i love just exploring the town and i really really enjoy the variety in the actual environments as well so yeah 
Stay tuned for more Salasa updates. I got you guys covered. Thank you so much for watching. Check out the links in the description below, and I will see you next time. Take care.